Hey everyone, it's Hugh Sweeney here and I'm back with another video. Can you believe it? And in this video here, I'm gonna review two new lights which iFootage have sent me a couple of weeks ago. Now they sent a few other little bits and pieces as well. Two other lights which are brand new from iFootage. But I'm gonna focus on these two for now because they're very similar lights and they're the only two new LED panel style lights from iFootage. Now if you don't know who iFootage are, you're obviously not a YouTuber like me. Yeah. All right, let's get on with it. So both the PL180BN and the PL180C are physically identical and they offer the same sort of power output, which is 80 watts, I do presume, hence the number 80. Now the PL180BN is a CCT light, which stands for correlated color temperature, sort of the same light that you'll get during the day with natural light from the sort of midday brighter sunlight to colder light when you have cloud cover plus that warmer, more yellow, orangey type of light that you get in the evening. So CCT lights are always very handy to have. Now the PL180C is an RGB light, meaning that it'll give you any color. So there's a lot more flexibility with this light and you can get a little bit more creative. Now, if you do have the CCT version and you wanna create some RGB effects, of course you can gel the light as well with some gels that you can clip onto the barn doors or even onto the light itself. So why would you buy the CCT version, the BN light, if you can do so much more with the RGB light? Well, the question is, can the RGB light do as good a regular uh, daytime type of temperature light as the 80BN here over my right shoulder? Well, that is a good question. Generally speaking, sometimes less is more. And if you have dedicated LED bulbs that are manufactured to create really good quality daytime light, you would think that they would offer a better result than a full RGB type LED light panel. But to be honest with you, when I looked at these side by side, even now when they're both set at 4000 Kelvin, the RGB version really does come in close in its light quality for just replicating daytime light throughout the temperatures from the warmer to the colder lights. So depending on price, you're probably better off just to get the full color RGB light, the PL180C. Now I don't know the price of these lights, but knowing iFootage and their position in the market, they generally are budget conscious. So I would imagine that these lights are quite affordable. Now both lights are switched on with a little small power switch. They have two dials. One is a dedicated dimmer dial. The other is a set dial where you can dial in your settings in the menu system via the menu button. Speaking of buttons, each light has four buttons. The ATC's four buttons give you CCT, HSI, FX and menu. Whereas the ATBN gives you CCT, FX, and the menu, but it also has a Bluetooth button in there. So having the dedicated button for Bluetooth is obviously just a f what you call a filler button. In other words, they use the same exact form factor, but they just put in a button to fill the gap. Now, speaking of Bluetooth, both of these lights will operate from your phone via the app, and I'll get to that later in the video. Now, the LCD screen on the back of the lights isn't the most contrasty type LCD screen. It's fine, you can see it. I found it to be a little bit faded looking, and when I was changing the settings, I noticed that the response of the actual display was very sort of sluggish. You know, as you turn the dial, you just have this sort of mush of figures, and you don't know what it's actually telling you it is until you stop for a second or two and then it reads out the settings. So the LCD on the back, not that impressive on both of these lights, to be honest. Now, if you press the dimmer button, you can toggle through 20% increments, which is handy when you wanna just get to a certain value quite quickly, as opposed to constantly turning the knob. Now, I do think it would be better if iFootage made it 10% increments because 20 is a little bit too much. 10%, you can still get there really quickly by just tapping it a few times. Like say, if you wanna to get to 50%, that's just five really quick taps. It only takes a second. So 10% would be better than 20%, but even 20%, it's kind of handy to just bang through the settings there really quickly. Now the lights come shipped with this piece of opal acrylic, which is in front of the face of the lights. Now this doesn't make a whole lot of difference to be honest with you. And what it does do is it kills the light a little bit. You might get a slight bit more diffusion if you are really close to certain things, but generally speaking, the actual plate that's inbuilt on the light, the diffuser plate that's screwed in there, 
will give you a pretty even light and you'll get more brightness out of the light if you don't have the diffuser plate inserted. So what's the power out of these lights like? I was fairly surprised at how bright they were. They really do offer a good kick in terms of light output. I tried them out yesterday with Ryan, my son, and we were just messing about and I found it very easy to fill in daytime light. I have a lot of windows here, so you tend to get a very silhouetted look if you're trying to film. But with these lights, even at lower values, I was able to sort of fill in a lot of the shadows. Now these lights are powerful enough for interviews and you could actually put some diffuser paper on the barn doors of the lights, creating a larger light source, which will work better for interviews and jobs where you want a softer type light. They're also powerful enough for big washes of light that you might want to put on a wall or something like that. They really do output a lot and I tried them in here and they created a really nice big fill of light, which I thought was very, very satisfying. So they're very useful lights. You could use them for photography as well, for food and product photography. They're gonna give you a lot of light. Now there's two little clips on the top of each light, which if you open them, will let you fit barn doors and likewise the acrylic diffuser plate. I found the barn doors to be quite nice and you'll probably find yourself having them just left in the lights at all times. Now, when it comes to fan noise, you can hear the lights when they're on full whack. When they're left on standby, the fan will be on and then when you actually put the lights on, the fan will quieten. Now, if you do leave them on at high power, the fan is gonna need to kick in. You can hear it, but I've heard worse and it's a steady sound, easy to remove in post-production if you happen to have them close to a microphone. But at the moment now, they're right behind me at 50% power and I can just hear a very, very quiet hum coming from them. So fan noise isn't bad, it's not perfect, but I don't think it's gonna be an issue for most users. Now the back of these lights has an inbuilt V-mount clip should you want to fit a V-mount battery for shoots where you mightn't have power access. Very, very handy to have. Plus you have the option of clipping on the transformer there as well because it has a handy little V-mount bracket attached out of the box. You can remove the annoyance of not having the power bank dangling off the light stand or whatever, but you are greatly reducing the length of your power lead then. So I noticed that even though I had it clipped on at the start, I thought it was great. I unclipped it and just hung the transformer lower down on the light stand, giving me a little bit more length in my lead. Now these lights have what I would describe as a DCBQ build quality, decent consumer build quality. In other words, the build is pretty good quality for the target audience that these lights are aimed at, which is kind of like uh, me, uh, you know, YouTubers and probably you as well. They're for the sort of home user, the YouTuber, as I said, the corporate video guy. All around, they're pretty decent, but if you were throwing them in and out of bags on bigger shoots quite often, I would say that they're not ideally suited for that, but I will assume you will get years out of them if you look after them. Now let's talk about effects for a minute. Both of these lights come with the usual effects that I've seen on the other iFootage lights that I reviewed there last year. Now the ATC version can do a lot more because it's full color so you can get like fireworks flashing police and ambulance cars with the red and blue. With the CCT version you're sort of limited to the sort of more paparazzi lightning welding cloud cover setting. There's a lot of different effects in there. Some of them you might try and find yourself using, others you might not. It all depends on what you're shooting. It is nice to have a couple of effects to get creative. But I'm gonna be honest, I really think that with these lights, what they should do is give you a more customizable type effects solution. I found myself really wanting to kind of create something more usable for movies. For example, the lights have an effect called faulty bulb and it, it just basically just flashes on and off. But if you could sort of manually create a more organic flashing bulb, more random, that would maybe sort of replicate a real fluorescent, you know, where it goes a little bit yellow for a while and then it flashes bright white and then it diminishes down. In my head, I kind of see a version of the app where you could literally draw a Bezier curve in which the light could follow and maybe change color as you do it. Something more manual and organic as opposed to what they're giving us, which tends to be just too formulaic, regular, and in many cases, not that usable. To be honest with you, the candle and the fire settings, as well as the TV settings, I don't find that they look anything like what those light sources would emit in actual real situations. Some of the smoothness on the FX as well is a little bit uneven. Uh, I find that, you know, 
it's just going up and down. It's very stepped. It looks like it's not that organic. I would like to see iFootage just put a bit more work into creating something more natural looking for some of their effects, especially things like explosions and fireworks. Now, I, I did find that on the RGB version of the light, they have a lot of different presets there from different known gel manufacturers like Roscoe and the likes. And it's handy to just go through different actual pre-designed gels. That is very nice to have. Plus with these lights, you can pre-program as many iFootage lights as you have and save it down as a preset. So if you've got your lights kind of set up in a configuration and they're all set to what you want, you can just save it down as a preset. And I found that to be very, very handy. Now you can slide in the settings on the app and you can adjust the actual graduation there. You can go from a linear brightness to a more exponential brightness, which a lot of us users want because you can generally get more control over the lower brightness in the light. Now with the sliders on the phone, when you're sliding, uh, it's hard to get the exact level that you want. I do think that they should integrate a little plus and minus button so that you could actually just go by single percentages if you want, just to dial in the exact setting that you need. So who are these lights ideally for? Well, I kind of said that already in the video, the YouTuber, the general content creator, Yes, you can use them professionally, but they're not built for industrial level film shoots. But then again, you shouldn't throw around any light. You should keep them in a case and look after them. Now, speaking of cases, I do believe that iFootage have dedicated bags coming out for these lights. Now, iFootage have sent me some bags that are brand new, but I haven't really used them yet. Can you see inside, sir? I do think that iFootage should make a really good rugged sort of all-in-one light bag, a little bit like the think tank bags, which just are fantastic for bigger projects where you wanna get a few lights into a bag, maybe even diffuser light boxes and some light stands, just a proper big wheelie bag. So what if it weighs a bit, just get everything in there. So I'm hoping that iFootage kind of consider manufacturing something like that, as opposed to just smaller bags dedicated for individual lights because when you're traveling as a videographer and you're doing a commercial job, it can be a little bit of a pain when you have a lot of bags. Sometimes you want to just get everything into one big bag and wheel it out to your vehicle and you know, you're kind of done then. So which should you buy between the 80BN and this one, the 80C? Well, I'm finding it hard to answer that question in my head because the 80C just has so much flexibility with its RGB light. You can dial in pretty much any kind of light that you want and it's as bright as the 80BN. But is the light as nice for daytime type lighting as the 80BN? Oh, I can't really answer that for now. It kind of looks as good to me and you probably can't tell the difference if you didn't know which was which on the two lights behind me there. I mean, they're lighting up the background just fine. Now, as I've said in other videos, I don't really review Anthem that I feel I won't use. And having used these lights now for a couple of days, I really feel like that they would be something I would bring with me on commercial shoots, just if you need a bit of fill of light, if you need some light shooting interviews, and if you want a bit of a color wash or whatever, they're just all around handy lights to have. So I would highly recommend them. In fact, I would go as far as saying that if you don't have any lights at all, well then something like these lights are a great place to start. I hope you got enough information out of this video to help you with your buying decision if you're gonna pick these lights up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you. Now, if you haven't subscribed to me already and you feel like I offer something that may be of value to you in terms of content creation or whatever your niche is, then do subscribe. It'll help this YouTube channel, which should help me. All right, guys, that's about it for this one. Check out the next video on the way, which should happen in the next uh, millennia or so. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. I appreciate it. And I appreciate it if you'll give me a thumbs up on the video as well. And do leave a comment as well if you have any questions, something that I might have kind of covered in the video itself. So until next time, guys, I'll see you. Take care. Oh my God, that is beautiful. So fresh. Oh.